How's it going guys? This is Shock Block with another gas mask review. Today I'll be talking about the XM28 E4. Um, this mat was produced in the late 1960s, mine being 1969. It was used for tunnel rats in the Vietnam War. Um, the proposition to make these masks came from the fact that at the time using the M17s uh, they're big, they're bulky, they didn't breathe well. Just general, they weren't good for people who were crawling through tunnels all day long in that humid, you know, hole. Um, anyway, when they realized that they should make something that would benefit the wear of tunnel rat or benefit tunnel rats, um, they proposed two ideas, uh, or two prototypes. Um, the first one being the XM27, which was essentially just a completely clear uh, silicone version of the M17. It only weighed, I want to say, 8 ounces less than the M17, so it didn't really change all that much. Um, then they also had the XM28, which was very light. I want to say a total of 32 pounds, or thir 32 pounds, 32 gram, or yeah, 32 grams or ounces, one of the two, and um, was very compact, was very you know light, like I've already said. It was you know it was everything that tunnel rats needed. Um, so they came up with, they decided that the XM28 was the way to go. So they started producing it, and it was only produced for a few years because, you know, then the war was over. Um, this is the Haversack for it, if you want to call it Haversack. It's very, very small, it's very compact. <clears throat> Essentially nothing to it, which makes this one so unique, if that makes any sense. It's unique because it's not unique in any way. There is no shoulder strap, it's just belt, belt loops on the back, canvas, you know, belt loops. The bag itself is made of very nice, you know, durable canvas material, metal snaps. I'll get right into this. And you might be thinking, okay, well, how does this mask fit in this bag? And this is the comparison right there. And well, from what I've been told, and I'm not going to do it because it's not like I need to have it put in a bag. I just need to collect it. I mean, it's for collection purposes, and I'd like to keep it looking as nice as possible. Um, but anyway, supposedly the way that you do it is you have to fold it inside out, which would break a plastic piece that goes right through here in the top. Or go, it's somewhere right in here, but it ended up breaking a small plastic piece inside the mask um, in order to properly fold it down. I want to say it's like this or something, yeah. Um, but I don't need to do that because I'm not a soldier in the Vietnam War. And it's not like this would protect me in the event of a nuclear explosion anyway or any that time I need it because it's only for riot control agents, i.e. tear gas, um... You know, that kind of stuff. Pepper spray, whatnot. Um, you know, back to the bag. When you open it, it unfolds like this. The inside is a rubber coating, or it's a rubber material coated in probably silicone of some sort. And when I got my mask, I got a brand spanking new from the factory in 1969. Here's the bag that it came in. It says... 4240 something something something. I'm guessing that's the number to call or something. Uh, mask, not, or it's, it says mask, right control agents, XM28 E4 size medium, one each, yada yada yada. Mind Safety Appliances Company, so it's an MSA mask. Um, nothing else really to that, so I'll set that aside. Inside the bag, there was this, which is basically just um, charcoal material used for, to keep it fresh and keep it, you know, purified. It also came with these tools. 
I guess. I don't know what they do. There's two of them. They just kind of adjust. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of them is. Um, but it just came wrapped in like this pure towel material. Get these put away. <clears throat> and it was just wrapped in some kind of Teflon. There's no labeling to it or anything else. That's what was inside the bag. Alright, moving on. <clears throat> on the bag it says, check for check mask for visual defects and leaks before each mission. Mask, riot control agent, XM28, E4. For use in riot control agents only. Big letter. On to the mask. Um, another cool thing about this mask is it, you know, it sits like this, which you can see how it would look like a grasshopper. The exhale valve is pointed towards where the neck would be. So when the wearer is, you know, crawling through a tunnel, whatever, the air that they're blowing out is blowing back on their neck, so it kind of cools them down a little bit. <clears throat> it's a it's a cheek side loaded or cheek filter loaded mask. If you don't own a cheek filter mask, i.e., M10s, M17s, PVF, um, whatnot. Um, they're not, they're, they're not fun to put in. They are easily some of the most painful, monotonous things to do because the snaps are harder than anything to put on. <clears throat> um, what else can I say about the front other than markings right there? Let's see if I can get that in the shot. It says 69, MSA, 2E21. Um, but yeah, very, very durable head harness, canvas material as the back, uh, head piece, um, elastic canvas material for the grips or for the, um, the bands, <clears throat> riveted, riveted pivoting points for the mounts of each of the, um, Harness mounts. Very, very good material. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Nothing on this mask feels cheap in the slightest. You know, it's very, very comfortable mask. It's almost like it's a, a silicone with a kind of matte material over top. So it's very smooth. Moving on to the inside of the mask. See if I can get some light in there. So on the inside you can see I have, I guess that's the face form there, or it's a piece of face form. Um, I don't have any intention of taking it out because it doesn't affect anything on the mask and I'd like to keep the mask in as good condition as I can. You can see right there the inlet valve uh, for the uh, oral nasal cup are metal very good material um, you can see the snaps there or at least one of them and you unsnap that you unsnap a couple other them and you can get into where the cheek filter is um, resting at I wonder if I can get you in there you can see down there where um, the exhale valve slash um, voice staff or voice emitter is it's right there it doesn't I don't think it works too well but I'll put on the mask and I'll let you guys know or I'll let you guys decide <clears throat> what you guys think there is a small pivoting uh, chin rest right there with a little tab on it so you can adjust it to where you want it um, can't work back here um, that about covers it. There's another stamp on the inside of the mask. I'm not going to pick up the camera again to try and show you, but if you guys can see it, it just says 29, or I mean 69 again. Um, that's pretty much it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been Shock Locker. Um, this mask was referred, or somebody requested I do a review on this mask, and 
the gas mask collecting group inside of a, it's a Facebook group, which I'll put a link to the on the inside. And I strongly recommend you guys join. We're always looking for new members um, because we can always learn something new from each other. There's always something new to learn and everybody always has a very unique collection. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please put a like down below. Um, if you want me to continue the series, like the video, subscribe if you would. It just shows me that you guys are liking it. Um, what else? I'm I'm sorry for saying um so much, by the way. Um, and there we go again. But yeah, so this has been it. If there's anything you'd like me to talk more about, you know, that I didn't quite go into enough detail for you or... It just wasn't up to par with your standards of a decent gas mask review video. Let me know in the comment section below. Or if you guys have any more questions that I can just answer in there, let me know below. Thank you for watching. This has been Shock Blogger, and I'll catch you guys next time.